Hey gang, it's Mike from PowerBI.Tips. I'd like to walk you through a new tutorial today. The tutorial today will be segmenting your page with slicers, so segmented filtering with slicers. Let's jump right into the demo. So here's my page of data. I've got a number of areas here. Let's make that large so everyone can see it. So I have two sets of data. On the left-hand side, I just have some information around, you know, maybe a comparison I'm looking to do between two different companies and Ford and Chevy, and then potentially looking at cars and trucks and vans. So then I have some slicers on the left-hand side here where I can then adjust what my slicer selection is. So I can adjust by like a SKU type. If I'm only interested in looking at cars, and it'll adjust all my data. This is fairly straightforward. This looks, you know, this is how you would expect a normal slicer to work. You adjust something, and then everything changes. However, in this case, I actually have controls for the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So now if I want to specifically pick a customer, let's think I'm looking at the Chevy vehicles, it'll then blank out the visuals on the right-hand side and then only show me those items. So I can pick Chevy, Ford, or Toyota. So again, this is kind of how we expect things to work. Um, however, you'll notice here that the Chevy and Ford is on the left-hand side and the Toyota is on the right-hand side. So maybe you want to segment data to one side or the other. Well, technically, all these visuals are doing the same thing. All the calculations and measures are, are measuring the same information. The, all the sums are uniform across all the visuals. So then how am I toggling between both sides here? So then what I've done, I'll show these two additional slicers down here below. So what's happening down here below is I have two additional slicers one for Chevy and Ford and one for Toyota. So this slicer here on this side is basically taking care of all the controls for the data that lives on the left side of the page. And then similarly, the other slicer here is controlling on the right side data. But we're actually segmenting these two slicers so that they're only controlling one side of the data piece. So think about this. What if you need to do some interesting comparisons? What if I wanted to look at you know, different relationships? So I could you know, untick Ford here, and then I can compare directly Ford to Toyota, and then I can adjust that. Well, maybe I want to look at Chevy over here. Well, okay, and maybe I want to adjust it again and say maybe the Toyota goes over here. Cool, but then think about this if you're also comparing you know, similar groupings. So what if I wanted to compare Chevy against Ford and then Chevy against Toyota? I could also do that as well. Chevy compared to Ford on the left-hand side, and then Chevy compared to Ford on the right-hand side. So then I can see, oops, Chevy compared to Toyota. That'll probably make more sense. So now I can see these breakdowns against these two common areas. So my common thread here of the story is Chevy, but then I can compare against either, each of these other companies as well and see how I'm performing it against them. So kind of a neat way of doing that. So let's kind of start talking about how we would make this visual work. I'm gonna move over here to a new page. All right, data tables are fairly straightforward. I have a customer table. Let's actually give you a view of that. Here's my table. Simple information, I just have some dates, some customers, a SKU, a categorical value, and then some, some numerical values that live in here as well. Back over to the report page. So you'll note here, I have a couple of blank sizes here on the left-hand side. So what I'm gonna start doing is I'm gonna start by adjusting the filter controls of these slicers. So very first thing I want to do is I want to make these two slicers over here on the left work independently of each other. So to show you why I want that, if I grab the customer and add him to this visual, and I add the customer to this other visual down here below, you'll note that if I click Chevy on the top one, everything on the page changes, including the slicer below it. Well, in the previous behavior, we didn't have that. I was able to select one item and let the other slicer was inactive. So we can adjust that. So I go up here to the Format ribbon, click Edit Interactions, and you'll note that there's a little icon on the top of these visuals. So I've selected this, this custom visual, this visual here, this is a slicer, and you'll note every other visual on the page now has other icons attached here. So this tells you how you want to interact. So if I want the visual I have selected to not do anything, I'll click the little Do Nothing symbol, None, No Interaction. So now it lets me have two different controlling mechanisms on this page. And conversely, I need to adjust this one below it. So if I click forward down here, you'll note that the top one also adjusts. So I don't want that interaction to happen. So then I'll also adjust this to say none. So now I can pick any combination of these two slicers and everything adjusts on the page. But now you'll note that if I select two different items, the page goes entirely blank. 
So now we have to put additional controls around what each slicer is going to be modifying. So my top slicer, I'll make modify the left hand side. So I'll leave these controls on from a slicing perspective, slice, slice, and slice for each of the visuals. But the left hand slicer, I don't want to control the right side of the page. So then I'll remove the controls there and say, do nothing. So I don't want to do anything here, none, none, and none. So now you'll see that I can control the left hand side only, but not the right hand side. Now you'll note here, I'm, I'm still only seeing partially parts of my data. That's because the secondary slicer is also trying to control things. So I've moved down to the secondary slicer. And again, this slicer, I want to not control the left hand side. For this bottom slicer, I want to control only the right hand side. So the right already has been filtered items. Good. We'll just remove the controls from the left hand side. Remove, remove, remove. Great. So now I'm able to slice and dice between the two groups. So now the left slicer will adjust the left side only, and the right slicer will adjust the right side only. Cool. And then finally, we have a slicer here at the top. This would be like our total control of the page. So this may be something else where we want to bring in the, the skew type up here. So I'll bring in the skew, drag the skew column over to our other slicer. And now this slicer will still adjust everything across the entire page. So this will, you know, if, if both groupings have skew types, I can then adjust these similarly, and then it both modifies all the data on the page. Now, this is not very in, um, practical because it's really hard to delineate between what is the left-hand side and the right-hand side from a numerical standpoint. So over here on the Chevy, what we'll do is we'll add some legends to these charts so you can actually see what's going on. So selecting the first chart, we'll go to the visualization panel, click the paint roller, and we will, well, before we do that, we need to add a data column. Let's add the customer as our legend column. So there's Chevy, and this one will also add a customer as our legend. Over here, this third chart on the right-hand side will also add customer. And same thing for this bottom table as well, legend. All right. I hate having legends because they're, I feel like, redundant information. So if you look across this page, you'll note that Chevy is green on every single legend. So I typically don't like showing them. So what I do instead, as a little trick, I will move these two items up. And instead, I will add a tree map. So we'll add a tree map here on the left-hand side. Let's make him really wide there. And let's add in our customer name here. Count of customers should be sufficient. And the grouping will also be customer as well. So now we're counting how many times Chevy appears as a distinct count. Let's do that so it doesn't do something funny. All right. Great. Click the little down arrow and changing the count to distinct on the values item. So this now is on the left hand side of my screen. I need to adjust how this is interacting with my left hand slicer. So the, the top slicer is the left side of the screen. That looks correct. The bottom slicer is the right side of the screen. Oh, and I'll note here, now that I've added this visual, it's now being controlled by the right hand slicer. So now we need to go up here and adjust the filter icon to do nothing, none. This way, when I control the left-hand side, it'll automatically update with the colors. So now I get a nice titled bar at the top, and all my colors match on that side of the page. If I want to do the same thing on the right-hand side, like I had earlier, just Control-C, uh, highlight the tree map, Control-C, Control-V, paste it back on the page. I'm going to move it to the right-hand side of the page. And again here, uh, we want to also affect how the controls are working here as well. So click on the top slicer. And you'll note here, in the top slicer, we're controlling the left side of the screen. We want to adjust this new tree map to not react. So we'll click that to none. And then we'll adjust it for the bottom slicer. And then we'll leave this one to reacting. And that looks like it's right. All right, so now I can adjust the slicers any which way I want. And now all my data changes accordingly. And they all adjust based on what I've selected. Thanks for watching the tutorial. We'll catch you again next time.